Let's put it all together, what we've learned here, and how do you calculate that cell potential for a reaction? The equation to get the overall net cell potential is you're going to do the cathode E cell potential value minus the anode cell potential value. Just a little reminder, cathode is where the reduction takes place. The, the, the part of the reaction where you're gaining electrons and the anode is where oxidation takes place. Which chemical is the one losing the electrons? So if we look at that copper and zinc reaction where we decided on the previous slide that the net reaction was going to take place between an aqueous solution of copper and elemental neutral zinc. In that reaction, the copper is the one that's gaining the electrons. So the copper is the cathode and the zinc is the one that's losing the electrons. Leo oxidation, that's going to happen at the anode. So if our equation says to do cathode minus anode, the copper is the one that's happening at the cathode, the zinc at the anode. We can look up the cell potential values for your copper that's taking place at the cathode. Copper's value is 0.34 and then the zinc value on that standard reduction potential chart is negative 0.76. So when we do 0.34 minus a negative 0.76 we get a positive 1.1 volts. That's what your voltmeter would read if you hooked up a cell between a copper ion and solid copper, zinc ion and solid zinc combination. That's what your voltmeter would read. We did a little practice uh, giving, given these reactions here. So we look at our reaction. We know already which direction it's going to happen spontaneously. We figured that out on a previous slide. That the spontaneous reaction is going to be solid copper with an aqueous solution of silver ions reacting together. When you look at the copper in this reaction, the copper starts as neutral on the left hand side, ends as positive 2 on the right hand side. That means it's losing electrons, it's being oxidized, that happens at the anode. The silver goes from plus 1 to neutral. So it's gaining electrons, it's being reduced, that happens at the cathode. So we're going to do our reaction cathode minus anode. So we look up the silver value on our chart and subtract the copper value from our chart. 0 0.8 minus 0.34. If you had that copper silver cell, uh, you'd get a volt voltage reading of positive 0.46 volts. Or if you had that iron solution reacting with elemental tin, your iron there is the one who is gaining electrons. It goes from plus 3 down to positive 2. That means it's getting reduced. It's taking place at the cathode. Your tin is the one who is losing electrons, going from neutral to positive 2. It's happening at the anode. So you're going to look up that iron reaction value and subtract the tin reaction value to get a positive 0.91. What did you notice about the sign of all the E cell values that you just calculated? You should have noticed that they're all positive thermodynamically favorable, products favored, electrochemical reactions all have positive E cell values. If you get a negative E cell value, double check your work. That would only happen when you have an electrolytic cell where energy is required to get the reaction to go. And usually we're going to be working with voltaic galvanic cells when doing calculations. So uh, some other things you've seen right in the past, uh, if it has a negative G value, it's thermodynamically favorable in the product's direction. If it has a K greater than 1, thermodynamically favorable in the product's direction. 
Here's another way. If the E cell value is positive, it's thermodynamically favorable in the product's direction. So what if we gave you this combination of chemicals, a cad piece of cadmium in a cadmium solution, piece of iron in an iron solution. So we have all these chemicals available. What direction is it going to proceed? And what would the E cell value be? So our first thing that we'd have to figure out there is what the spontaneous reaction is. Is it between solid cadmium and aqueous iron or the other way around? When you look at your cell potential chart, that northwest southeast line happens between the cadmium iron, or cadmium ion, excuse me, and elemental iron. So it's that bottom reaction there that is that combination. When we look at that reaction now that's in that green box, the cadmium is gaining the electrons. It's going from positive 2 down to neutral. It's being reduced, so that's taking place at the cathode. The iron is the one losing the electrons, oxidized. Oxidation happens at the anode. So if our reaction, our equation is cathode minus anode, we're going to want to take that cathode number, cadmium, and subtract the anode number for iron. In this picture, if we say which one is X, which one's Y between that cadmium and the iron, we said the cadmium was the one that's gaining the electrons being reduced at the cathode and the iron is the one losing the electrons at the anode. So that tells us that X is iron and Y is cadmium in this picture. So what's that E net value for this cell? We have to do cathode minus anode, in other words, cadmium minus iron in this particular problem. So we go to our chart, find the values, subtract them, and we get a positive 0 0.04 volts. Just a little reminder, you should always get a positive E value for all spontaneous reactions for all those batteries. If you ever get a negative E value, you wrote it backwards. It would occur spontaneously in the other direction.